Hey, hey, Tony guys here. I want to share something with y'all that I seen. And it, it was a little shocking, but it, it just went to show me how what I be trying to tell y'all is true when I tell you that it's really only two types of men. Y'all got to forgive me, man. Something in my eye. Really only two types of men out here. And that is the type of man that's a grown man and the type of man that's a grown boy. And a lot of women don't believe that. But here it was, I seen a video of a white man. He older than me, he heavier than me, and he balder than me. And he explained something that I always teach. And he was asked by a lady, she, she said, is it true that a man marries who's in front of him? That a man marry when he is financially ready and he ready to start a family, he married a woman in front of him. And the man say, no, that's not true. A man married a woman who bring him peace. And he went on, to, he was basically saying, a man don't marry a combative woman. A man married a woman that's his biggest supporter, his biggest fan, and bring him peace. Now, he used different words. I don't like the word fan. Let, let that be clear. I love supporter. But it, it's really more so than that, because a lot of times that energy be fake. It'd be more so, oh, congratulations. It'd be like fake energy. And and a lot of times it's deceptive. I talked about early on the Sunday sermon about the fruits of the spirit. Now, if you really had a fruits of the spirit, then you will be a perfect spouse, man or woman. You'll be a perfect spouse. And it's not deceptive. It's really what's coming from your spirit. But a lot of times what happens is women will see men get with a Bali Whopper and wonder, like, why is this man with this Bali Whopper? And what I mean by a Bali Whopper, I mean a loose woman, a woman who has been all about town. Everybody done been in her. And women who know her know that she done had them legs open. And they're like, how did she get a husband? What she learned from dealing with so many men is she learned how to adapt to a man. And she learned how to stroke a man's ego. Meaning she learned how to listen to a man. And she learned how to support a man. And... The issue that happens with a lot of women is a lot of women never get beyond themselves and they never get beyond what they want and what they need. So the relationship becomes about what they want and need and instead of about let me love this man or submit unto this man as unto the Lord. That's the painful part. Ooh, that pain, that hurt right there. That hurt because of the society that we live in and because of the trick of the enemy. That word submit is a curse word. And so what happens is so many women go in and they're combating with the man. Instead of just leaving. Like if you have a man who is an idiot. Instead of you debating with an idiot. And debating with a fool. And trying to convince and trying to change a fool. You should recognize the red flags. And then remove yourself from the foolishness. Instead women go to war with their man. And they combating the man and they trying to raise him 
and trying to teach him every little thing and they hold in his hand and they become a parent to the man. They become the man's second mom and teaching him everything and showing him everything and why do you keep leaving the toilet seat up? Why don't you pick up your plate after you're done? Why don't you communicate? Why don't you answer the phone every time? Why don't you clean up? Why don't you buy me roses? Why don't you open my door? Why don't you pull out the thing? Why don't you check on me in the morning? Why don't you check on me at night? Why don't you stay on the phone with me when I'm driving home? Why don't you write me? Did you make it home? Say, why don't you do it? And they just, every little thing, you just got to, every little thing, every little thing. And before you know it, the man started to feel smothered. He started to feel like a child because she wanted to show him how to cook, show him how to clean, show him how to wash his face, show him how to wash his ball, show him how to do this, show him how to do that. Instead of just saying, you know what? This man was not raised right. This man practically a barbarian. I ain't got the time to deal with what he bringing and I'm not trying to raise him. This ain't my man, let me go on about my business. She become his parent. And that's where the term nagging is so overly used in, in relationships because now she becomes a nagger. And while she a nagger, she might end up calling him a, another N-word. And now he mad, he's resentful, he want to fight. And in, in that resentment, he may want to go get him an, another piece of booty. And a lot of men, because they are not men, we're not men a lot of times, will go cheat on a woman to get back at her. A lot of men will rather cheat on a woman to get one up in his mind than to just sit down and talk to her and say, listen, you got to stop all this nagging. I'm a grown man. I know how to do this. I know how to do that. You got to stop all this nagging. You you nagging too much. You doing too much. And instead of just doing that and talking to her direct, like, hey, this right here what it is, a man will go and try to get off a release somewhere and try to do something in spite of the woman, like they say, don't cut off your nose despite your face. And I really want you to picture what that look like. Like if I get mad that I got this wrinkle in my forehead and I say, you know what? I'm sick and tired of that wrinkle. Then just cut my nose off. And just cut my nose off. Now what I look like, one of them skeletons on tails from the crib and with a wrinkle. And that's what a lot of men are doing in a relationship. I'm sick and tired of her nagging. She always got something to say. Let me go sleep with that prostitute. Boom, go sleep with the prostitute, catch herpes. Now I come home, sleep with this woman, give her herpes. Boom, now she pregnant. Boom, baby come out with one eye. All because the cut his nose off despite his face. And that's what'll happen. And so what it comes down to is for, for y'all ladies that you want a husband, you got to learn how to pick your battles. You got to learn what's worth addressing and what's not worth addressing. You got to learn what really matters in the grand scheme of things. You got to learn that. And a lot of times we don't get that right. We don't get it together. And we cry and complain about the wrong things and the stuff don't be mattering. But you got to learn what really matters. And what I mean by this is you got to come to a place to where you say, okay, is it worth arguing about this plate? Is it worth arguing about this toilet seat? Is it worth arguing about these dirty socks on the floor? Is it worth arguing about that? And then you got to look and say, okay, is this man faithful? Is this man trying? Like, is he honest? Is he trustworthy? See, if you got the key components, if, if you got a man who is honest, he trustworthy, 
Like he's trying. Like he's not afraid to get a job. He's not afraid to work. Like he's ambitious. He's hardworking. He's consistent. He gonna do those things. All them other little things, like putting the toilet seat down, picking up his plate, all that stuff gonna come. And it's gonna come because you you gonna be showing an example, and he gonna start to see it. But then at the same time too, it's like you're his other half. So if that's all you got to do to show up as his other half is pick up a plate, flip the toilet seat down, that's way better than have to chase him after another woman, put a track on his car, having to punch him in the nose, cuss him out like a dog, worry about him, chasing him, tracking him, fighting him. And you got to realize, okay, let me pick my battles. If you got a hardworking man that's going to go to work and bring home the bacon, but he leave his dirty socks on the floor, you got to pick and choose your battles. And this where things get out of hand and this where the breakdown happens. Because a lot of times what women don't realize is that y'all stuff stink too. So a man may be overlooking 50 million things because men understand war and men understand battles so a man understand like okay i ain't finna keep, i'm not finna start no fight by this tampon that's on the top of the toilet or the tampon that's on the the, the edge of the shower or i'm not finna start no fight by all this skincare that's left out all over the sink all these curling irons and heaters left out all over the sink. I'm not finna start no argument by the laundry not being done every day or every week or the house not being clean or food not being cooked. I'm not finna start no argument by that. Like, I'm gonna just do what I gotta do, get around that, boom, boom, boom. Is she honest? Is she trustworthy? Is she faithful? If I ask her to do something, will she do it? That's how men look at things because men try to avoid the arguments on average and try to just navigate and pick the battles wisely. Now, if you want to have a male friend who is not gay, you going to have a battle. If you want to sneak and be talking to your ex-boyfriend and get caught, you're going to have a battle. If you want to talk to another man in any capacity, you're going to have a battle. If you want to put other people before your man, you're going to have a battle. But if you get in the shower with your tampon and then take it out and sit it down and then hop out real quick because you're running late and forget to dispose of it properly, you might get a joke, but you ain't going to have no battle. And you got to realize that if you if you rushing and you leave your, all your makeup brushes out or all your hair stuff out, you're not going to have a battle. You might get a joke, but you ain't going to have no battle. And so the reason why there's more women who are heavier with a husband than there are women who are real fit is because one thing about being a heavier woman is for a long time, she was the friend of the men because the men being visual creatures was looking for the women who body turned him on. And then he would make the heavier set woman his sister, his best friend. And so what she learned is she learned how to kick it with the boys. She learned how to kick back and watch the game and bring what she could bring. She bring the seven layer dip and she hanging with all the football players. And they see her like a sister. They treat her like a sister. They treat her with respect. Like they look out for her. But because she's not sexually appealing to them off, off the real, like out the gate, they get to really know her because they're not thinking about her booty shape. They're not thinking about her, 
you know, breast or a flat stomach, they get to know her for who she really is. And being around the guys, and, and I use that as an example, but it could be the girl with her daddy nose. And, and sometimes having your daddy nose, it sets you back. It sets you back. And because if a man look and it's like, man, she's smelling everything. It's like, ugh, I don't know, you know, if she gonna smell my must too easy. Like she really is sniffing a lot. And so some women have their daddy nose and that'll set her back. It might be how they daddy eyes like imagine a woman with that comedian out there that comedian with them eyes imagine his daughter having them eyes she'll look like she see through a man's soul like she got x-ray vision so a man might be a little setback like ooh, like look at her and see her daddy so I, I'm using that certain example, but it could be anything to where men don't look at you sexually. And you get to hang out with the guys, you get to do this and that, and you get to know them. So what happened, these women learn how to chill. Like, these women learn how to just kick it, just be one of the boys. And that's why they'll end up married first. Because when this man is with this woman, he don't have his he don't have to have his guards up. He don't have to be ready to answer kingdom issue questions. He don't have to be ready to argue. He don't have to be ready to hear nagging and nitpicking about this and that, this and that. He just get the kickback and they get to laugh, chill, talk about the game, talk about celebrity stuff. And, you know, she bringing the seven layer dip. She, she making the charcuterie board, the, the, the honey barbecue wings, like, she she just bringing what she could bring. She said, boom, I like to eat. I like to cook. I like to play cards. I like to play chess. I'm bringing what I'm bringing, and we finna just kick it. And she might actually start to have a crush on one of these guys and kind of like them, but her humility, because of how the world has treated her, she feel like her stuff stink. So that have her keep her legs closed. It have her keep her mouth closed when she's not supposed to be saying nothing. When she ain't supposed to be butting in and nagging and this and that, she'll play her role. She'll play her role and she'll say, okay, this is guy stuff. They getting into it about this right here. They might be about to fight. I'm going I'm to chill. I'm going to try to be a peacemaker i'm not going to antagonize i'm not going to pick out who right who wrong i'm, I'm going to try to mediate and she understand like how to exist to coexist with men and then whereas the woman who is miss it she got the booty perked up she got the breast perked up she got the flat stomach she come in like what can you do for me and what have you done for me lately? And I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like this, I don't like that. So she come like that. And the man like, so anything he do, he getting questioned by it. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? So now he wanna sleep with her to shut her up. And it's a saying that men used to always say, I would hear it all the time. It'd be like, man, she got a big mouth. Or, man, she talk too much. Or, man, she she always got something to say I'm, until I stick a thing in it. I'm talking about it's dang a lane. And so men will then make it a point to where they like, they want to take this woman and they want to break her because she act like she all that and she always got something to say. And she always want to nitpick and nag. A man will literally make it a point to try to play the game, play the role, get in, get past her tough girl act, get her to drop her guards, make her fall in love, make her addicted, and then ghost her. 
and make her weak, make her vulnerable, and make her chase him. Just because of the energy that she came in that was like, what can you do for me? Or what have you done for me lately? Whereas this other woman, she over there, and she like, she looking to get along. She looking to understand. She looking to communicate. And that gives her an unfair advantage. So a lot of times, you will see a woman who she's built different. Like she built different. She don't wear makeup. She always got a ponytail in. And you be like, how in the world she got a husband? When this woman over here walking around looking like J-Lo, grown daughter, and she ain't got no man. Like, think about it. And you're like, well, what's going on? And it's just because of how they come to the relationship, what they bring into the relationship. And so a man wants a best friend, a teammate. A man don't want no mom or no probation officer. He wants somebody that he can learn with, he can grow with, he can build with, but he can feel respected, loved, and appreciated. Not just judged, nitpicked, and overprotected. And so that's where this breakdown happens. So when that man was saying that, and to be honest with you, I know it to be true as a married man because although my wife, you know, she changed over the years, the more she got to know me, the more combative she would be. Like, the the longer we were together, the more combative she would be. And then also, I changed too. So when I became more, like, assertive or aggressive, then she realized she had to take a different approach in order to not be devoured, in order to not be just like completely a floor mat. She realized like, okay, I'm with a very dominant man, like a man's man. Like he have his ideas, he have his opinions, he gonna speak his mind, he gonna speak truth to power, he's not afraid of anybody, and he will eat you alive if you let him she started to realize like although i'm a nice person i'm by business and she seen me tear into to men no diddy no diddy nah but i'm talking about put a man in his place and make him feel two inches tall and talk to him unchristianly she seen that and so she realized like okay if he get in his feelings about something, he gonna let me know it. And so that's when she she adapted and she learned how to, you know, speak up and express herself and speak her mind. But she would do it the same way I would do it, without yelling, without cursing, but just direct, just no fear. But now, and that was a good adaptation that she made. You gotta be able to adapt. And, and you can't confuse what I'm saying. Like, you can't confuse being the teammate and being the friend with being the floor mat. It's a difference. See, a floor mat is a woman who faking. She faking just because she want a man. The woman who the friend and the teammate, she got both sides to her. She could be lovely and friendly and copacetic and get along. But if you try her like a baser, she going to put you in your place. So although my wife was the giggliness, the nicest, the friendliest, when I tried her, she left me. Two, three months in a day, and she left me. She said, if you're not going to be the sweet, thoughtful, kind, articulate, confident, secure, strong man that I met, and you want to turn into a insecure, controlling, domineering idiot, I'm gone. And so this nice woman who was so nice, so friendly, non-combative, 
She did not debate. She did not go back and forth. She didn't play devil's advocate just to be annoying. She was just nice, friendly, laughing, great conversationalist. But then when I tried to sleep with her before she was ready, she kicked me out of her bed. And I did not think she had that side of assertiveness or aggression in her because she was so easy to get along with so chill and that's where most women go wrong they come in and they they woo a man and they win a man by being the home girl like they so cool they so chill they so easy going they not a nagger they not a complainer they not a nitpicker they not a mom they not any of that to the man but then when the man tried him sexually in week one week two they also give in and have sex with the man and he has not even earned anything in her life she still don't even really know him they might not even be a couple not even an item so then the man lose respect for her Cause he like, okay, she's super duper nice, but she don't have a backbone. I can't trust somebody who don't have a backbone because if she'll do this for me and I'm not her husband, another man could come in and woo her and she'll sleep with him too. So a man still looking for a woman with a backbone. And then in addition to that, a man don't want a woman who just come in and she just showing fangs out the gate and she growling and she's so mean and she's so disrespectful and or just so just overly assertive, overly aggressive and she shows no chill side, no cool, calm, collected, no soft side, no no homegirl side. She just about business like and she treating it like an assembly line. Like, get in line, do this, do that, do that, do that, do that. Win the wedding date, win that, win that, win that. And it's like a, a business thing she running. And he's like, okay, we can't even be best friends. Like, we can't even kick it. Like, we can't even go to the movie and just have a good time, go bowling. Like, everything is about the wedding. Everything is about me being this perfect person and doing everything correctly to match up with what you wrote down in your journal. And it ain't nothing, none of this is organic and authentic and genuinely building. And so, boom, she get wrote off. Or he stay to make her weak. He stay to play the game. He stay to beat her, you know, to beat her at her game. She trying to play the game of how fast can I make a man my husband? And he say, okay, I'm finna show you something. And he take offense to that because he men by nature when we feel tested we become combative you know that fight or flight we 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 ready to fight whether that's spiritual warfare emotional warfare physical warfare whatever it is as men we be ready for it y'all gotta forgive me hey What? She's just nervous because she hasn't been there before, you know? She done? No, she's not done. I was dropping her off. Oh, okay. Uh-oh, what happened? Y'all, I got to go. My wife calling me. God bless you. I'll finish this. 